Um, and when we take on new business, um, at some point we get to the point where we have to have more managers. And the way we get more managers is through the manager and training process. So although a, a, an assistant manager is intended to, um, is to, intended to help you manager um, do a better job, be more efficient, it's also very important for you to real, recognize that your role is also to train the next generation of managers. Um, so it's, it's a two-way street. Um, so so that, that means, yeah, sometimes you're gonna get um, a green assistant and it's, it's a drag and I rely on you to, to train that assistant so that they can, A, first and foremost, become a better assistant. And if it's their intent to one day become a manager to be a, um, a better manager one day. And what I don't want is uh, for managers coming up to the ranks that do not adhere to these basic uh, procedures that are proven to be successful. Um, so th it does a lot of things. Um, you know, one of the things that, that uh, is important to me as the person that does the marketing is um, I, uh, you know, uh, oftentimes I hear, you know, that an association has had, you know, four different managers in two years. I mean, I, I almost hear that every time I go in. This is very common in our industry. Uh, managers jump from company to company to company, you know, I don't know why, but they do. And as a result, um, uh, these associations just get a revolving door of, of managers. So we try to minimize that as much as possible. And we try to keep continuity, but by having an assistant um, on, on a, a, an important account, usually it's the, more, the larger, more complex, more profitable accounts, um, it does allow us for more uh, um, flexibility and continuity. You know, for example, if we do have to swap out the manager, if the assistant remains, then at least you have that continuity of, of the same assistant who can bring the new manager um, up to speed. Uh, conversely, if, if it's time for um, an assistant to, it, you know, that assistant is, is a manager in training and it's time for them to take on new accounts, by them already assisting on an account, it makes it uh, easier for them to assume, assume that role. Um, it also, uh, you know, I, I, I like to think of our company as the business model, it's very entrepreneurial where um, it's not, you know, so much top down with me, you know, looking over shoulder, you know, giving you specific, you know, uh, um, you know, kind of dictating how you live your, your day to day um, existence. You kind of are on your own. You, you, you are on your own to serve, to serve your clients. Um, and uh, as a result, you kind of have your, your destiny in your own hands as far as um, your workload, your um, compensation, all of that is, 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 kind of, is kind of on you. And by uh, um, having this support structure, if it's utilized properly, that should enable you to be able to, to uh, take on more accounts if, if your compensation goals are such that you need to do so. Um, so really this document is the, the, to the extent that I'm, that I'm going to like try to micromanage how you deal with your day-to-day -day existence as a manager and a manager in training. <clears throat> so basic, basically, uh, you know, I think this is all pretty clear. The, the um, standard role of the assistant is kind of clerical, administrative, assistant letter writing, processing work orders, taking routine calls, um, attendance at some, some board meetings for, for those associations that are, that are larger. Um, you know, pre-COVID, we like guest check-in, distributing minutes, taking minutes, um, assisting inspector, that's something that's not quite as necessary um, as, as much anymore, um, and the, the processing of the routine punch list items. Let's skip that. Okay. Um, so this is where we kind of get into the, to the uh, nitty gritty. And this is really the folk, really the uh, uh, area that I kind of want to focus on is actually what does one do on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that this, that this system is maximized. Um, for one thing, I want, I want everybody to chunk their, their workload. I don't want you to constantly be gazing at your email, being disrupted by your email constantly. And, and then, having to somehow do that mind shift where you go back into whatever project you were working on and trying to get back up to speed. It's just, it, it's just, it's just proven that humans are not good at multitasking. And when you do that, when you shift from 
you know, task to task and go in and out of, of um, various lines of thought, uh, it's just going to make things much more inefficient. So uh, um, what I want you to do is to chunk your time and, and try to chunk the time that you deal with email into, you know, chunks per day. You may check it every once in a while here and there, but you're going to have plenty of email that you have to respond to. So it should be done that you, you put it all together, that, that project, that task into periods in the morning and in the afternoon. And by doing so, you can focus on your other work that you got to do, you know, minutes, newsletters, whatever it is, without that constant disruption. Um, doing the little things first, this is especially true after, after board meetings, um, but it is, it's also true just on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, every day, there's going to be, you're going to have a series, you're going to have your task list, things that you need to do. The little things, the little small things, you just knock out a bunch of them all at once. Just get it all done. Get it all done first thing in the morning because then you don't have to think about it. It's, it's already taken care of. You know, a lot of it will, have to, will, will be in the email. And um, one thing that you can do is when you send out these emails or you can write the emails, that doesn't mean you have to send the email right then and there. With Boomerang, you have the option to send something later. So for example, if you're knocking out all these punch list items and you're generating all this email, what you don't want is to get into these email exchanges throughout the day. Um, oftentimes you do not. So you can write the email, but then you say send later. Have it send at 5 p.m., you know, so, so that you will not get the response until the next day. If it's something you need an urgent response, you know, then, then obviously go ahead and send it. But if you want to avoid getting into these back and forth communication um, loops, then I would recommend to have the right the emails, but have them um, fire off a little bit later. Um, punch lists should be updated within 24 hours after the board meeting. Okay, so that means that at the meeting, you should be creating a, keeping a list. The way I used to do it is I would have an expanded agenda and a pen, and when little tasks came up, I would put a star next to it. So that when I reviewed the agenda the next day, um, when I'm writing the minutes um, or, or debriefing with my assistant, I had a list of everything that I was supposed to do. Um, when, you know, Janine, you know, I, I, a lot of my accounts, I transitioned over to Janine and she would do the same thing. She would do the exact same thing I was doing at the exact same meeting. She would, she would take notes, put a star next to anything that's an that's a action item. And then the next day we would compare notes. The next day is the debrief. Okay. It's really important that you do the debrief. Why? Because a, not only does it make sure that you're on the same page on what exactly needs to be done, but that's the manager's opportunity to explain to their assistant manager or their manager in training why they did what they did, why they allowed the meeting to go in the direction that they did, why, why did they um, say this when they could have said that. This is training. This is how you teach a manager how to think like a manager because it's not obvious. You know, there's, there's so many things that you do um, you know, to guide boards away from, from dark, dark areas, you know, to make bad decisions, to make decisions that are going to suck up a lot of your time. As a manager, you know, as an experienced manager, you should be navigating the meetings to avoid, you know, um, uh, unnecessary work, um, dead ends, time sucks, all of that. But it may not be readily apparent to your assistant, so you need to explain that to them. That's what the debrief is for. Um, the more you debrief, the more valuable that assistant becomes because the better they understand the thought process, the better they understand how you think. And it, it's, it's very important. Um, and then that punch list, that needs to be done like the next morning. The next morning, you should be getting pretty much all of it done. If, even if you can't get the, the punch list items done, you should get the ball rolling on those punch list items. You know, do the first step. Why? Because during the month between meetings or if they're by, by between uh, the two months, if they're every other month or whatever they are quarterly, you're going to have no shortage of things that come in throughout the month. And those are all distractions. What you could have already have done was done everything that came out of that meeting the very next day. Okay. Th these things have to be done. You can't avoid them. So you're, it's not like, it's not as though procrastinating on these top on these tasks does you any favors it does not what it does is it makes it more likely that they'll slip through the cracks it'll it makes it more likely that you get a late start and you cannot get you cannot get show results at the next board meeting 
it's it's just more than likely that it'll it will get swept away in the river of HOA management tasks. So that's why you have to have the discipline for the very next day to get all those tasks that come out of the meeting from the night before completed. One of those tasks is the minutes. You've got to do those minutes within two days and send them off to the board in draft form. Okay, this is very important. And it's part of the it's part of this process because by doing the minutes right then and there, you are kind of reliving the meeting and you are, it kind of brings you back into focus on what it was that happened. If you do the minutes the next month or two months later, then you, you, you can't even remember what happened. So you're going to, you're going to provide a poor product. Again, the minutes have to be done, right? You, there's no getting away from doing the minutes. So you might as well have the discipline to do them immediately after the meeting, get them to the board in draft form, show the board how, uh, how proactive you are and get all those punch lists done because that'll show service to the board. And not only that, it'll clear your mind and you'll know that even if you don't do another thing for that client until the next board meeting, you still did all those things. Okay. So, and, and these are the things that, that are going to be remembered. You know, the no, nothing upsets boards more than when they have to constantly remind a manager about this task or that task. They should never have to remind you. You should be the one that reminds them. Not all tasks are created equal. And you have to manage your, your um, boards to make sure that you are not given dumb tasks to do, okay? Because dumb tasks equal, you're not, you're not, it's your time. It's basically, you're going to be giving your time um, because somebody wants you to, to do a, a dumb task. But pushback on a board, that's something that, you know, you have to be uh, careful about. You know, you, you don't want to come across as being resistant to taking on tasks. You don't want to become across lazy. Um, you, you, you don't want to do that. So how do you avoid that? Um, as the meeting's progressing, you know, you should not be a passive manager sitting back like this, waiting to be spoken to. You should be leaning forward and you should be engaged. And as the board grapples from one topic to the next, as the expert, as the expert manager, you should be able to predict where it's all going. Every subject, you could see where the, how the board's talking, what kind of ideas are being floated. You should be creating a mental picture in real time of what that's gonna mean to you and your day-to-day -day existence if they go that route. So quickly interject and with solutions, come in and say, um, say hey, uh, um, may I make this suggestion? Um, I can just go ahead and contact this vendor and have them go out and do this and we'll just take care of it. Okay. And the board, the boards nine times out of 10 will be, will be very thankful. Like, Oh, thank you. There's a solution. And you know, in your mind that that's going to take you a minute, but you've stopped the conversation and you've put forth a recommendation. You've shown that you you're ready to do work and that you're engaged and they've gotten a solution and you've avoided them from going down some dark path that's going to result in you having to do this big task that's a complete waste of time okay so when you do this when you lean forward and you make recommendations like that for tasks that you know you'll be able to do very easily you're building a reservoir of trust you're building a reservoir of credibility and then you can spend it you can spend it when boards do come to you and say you know, hey, we, we want you to, uh, you know, go around and, and write down everybody's license plate in the, in, the, um, in the whole community when you're doing your site inspection. What? No, I know that's, that's not a, that's a bad idea for X, Y, and Z reasons. And since you've built up this credibility of trust and you're not somebody that's coming across as, as shirking your responsibilities, the board's going to be much more forgiving when you do assert yourself. Okay. So it's like you, you, you're building up your currency of credibility, of trust, and then you spend it to avoid these, these tasks that boards want to give you, these tasks that pull you away from things that really do make a difference. All right, and then uh, board packets. Um, I, don't, I don't ever, ever want to hear about a board packet um, received just before the meeting. Oh my gosh, that, 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 that's just like a, a point of honor and being in this company is that, you know, we, we get our board packets out on time. We just do. Okay. Again, just like all these other tasks I was talking about, board packets have to go out, right? 
So why do them late? If you know you got to do them, they have to go out. Why get them out late and make the company look bad and, and make, make yourself look bad. So um, they should, they should be uh, um, going out about a week in advance. I think six days is fine. Um, if you're emailing them out, you could probably get away with five days on occasion. Um, but um, just, just, you know, it, it's just silly to, um, <clears throat> to delay something that you have to do anyways, when you know it's a source of irritation for our boards. Okay, again, this is a little bit repetitive. Um, you know, minutes, minutes count, um, grammar counts, um, getting 90% of your punch list items done, done that day, um, making sure that your, you know, hearing result, um, hearing result letters go out in a timely manner, um, any, any sort of deadline, whether it be, you know, rules that are going out, everything has to be, you have to meet those deadlines. Um, communications, this, this is uh, something that I harp on quite often is, is that uh, we need to respond pretty much to everybody within 24 hours. That's including us internally. Um, again, you don't have to have the answers. All you gotta do is acknowledge receipt of a, of a communication so they know, you know? And, and again, you, you could send that acknowledgement um, in, you know, that same morning you receive the email, but have it go out later so that you kind of extend your, your, your clock. Um, so say, you know, I acknowledge receiving this, this email. Um, I, I should be able to review it within the next couple of days. Thank you for your the communication. Send that out, but don't have it go out until like that night. And then boomerang the email so that you, you it doesn't you doesn't fall through the cracks, and um, and then you will be in in, in compliance. Um, as far as uh, um, email hygiene, um, everybody should in your primary inbox. You should only have the emails there that are current that need to be dealt with. Something anything anything that doesn't need to be dealt with, anything that has been dealt with should be archived. Um, and if it can be dealt with later, you boomerang it so it disappears. And then all that's left in your inbox is, is, are just the items that need to be addressed um, in, the, in the near term. So if, if I come to your desk post-COVID and look over your shoulder and I see 500 emails in your inbox, I'm going to know 100% that there's plenty of things that fell through the cracks. I'll know just, just from that little, just from that one data point with 100% certainty that if there's 500 emails in your inbox, a bunch of stuff got missed. That's just, that's just how it is. All right. <clears throat> okay, I think I can skip this. All right. Um, in, uh, communication is, is, um, is really, really important. And, um, and it goes both ways. The assistants, the manager assistants, you know, uh, if, if there's something that's, that you're unclear about, something that you feel like you need more training on, make sure you have that communication with, with the manager. Um, same thing with, with the managers. Um, the, the uncomfortable conversation about uncomfortable conversations is, is something that has arisen quite often. If I, if, if, uh, if you sometimes, you know, managers and manager assistants, um, they have difficulty having uncomfortable conversations with one another. And so sometimes they come to me and, and then I will go to investigate and possibly um, enforce something. I don't, I don't ever like want to hear that, um, that somebody, uh, you know, I don't, I don't ever want to hear that somebody is upset, that somebody feels like they were thrown under the bus, that somebody feels, no, we're all adults here. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. And, and sometimes those mistakes need to be fixed. It's, it's nothing personal. It's, it's not like they're, they're unfixable mistakes, but then on the same time, they can't just be like swept under, under the rug as well. Um, we need to be able to have honest, open communication conversations. Sometimes they're going to be um, uncomfortable, but as long as we're uh, kind to each other 
and understanding and professional and know that we're all on the same team in this endeavor, they, they, they should be well, well tolerated. And we move on. You know, I've had a million uncomfortable conversations with, with pretty much everybody in the organization. And, you know, I'd be hard pressed to remember any of them, you know, because we, we move on and it's, it's no big deal. But without these communication and honest conversations, it's really, really difficult for, for us to, to grow. <clears throat> Okay. So the manager must do adhere to the CACM code of professional ethics at, at all times, which, um, and th this is, this is, this is intended to give you, uh, managers cover, uh, because, uh, we, we have in, in the code of, um, ethics, one of the provisions is that we'll never dispense, um, expert advice that we're not qualified to dispense. So whenever you recommend, uh, you know, we need to get legal advice on this. We need to bring in a construction management manager. Um, all of these things that the, the board may be looking to you to fill, you have this as cover and say, hey, uh, we're, we're, you know, as part of our company-wide certification, where all the managers are also certified by the California Association of Community Managers. And as such, we've all agreed to their code of ethics. And one of those provisions is that. <clears throat> Um, should have a, 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 a organized and clutter-free um, desk. Obviously, if you're working from home, I'm not going to be um, managing that or looking at that. But <laughs> um, I went, you know, if I'm walking around, when we go back to normal, walking around the office, if I see a, uh, um, a cluttered desk, that just tells me that there's a cluttered mind behind that desk and there's things being missed and there's um, uh, things fall into the cracks. So just like you, you need good email hygiene, you need good desk hygiene, um, as well. Um, when you're at a board meeting, again, this, this is, uh, not so important now, um, but you should organize your board packet in a way so that you're not throwing paper around, looking through, trying to find this, trying to find that, you know, I used, I used to use the, uh, um, I used to use a binder. So it was always very organized. I didn't, uh, you know, want to come across as disorganized or frantic. Um, so, and there's nothing more worse than shuffling through a lot of papers, saying uh, 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 trying to figure out where you are. So make sure you have that that level of organization. <clears throat> Always do the debrief for those associations that you have um, and an assistant with. Um, you can do that by by uh, Zoom easily or by phone. <clears throat> complete the minutes within two days and keeping the punch list items. Those are the manager must do's, um, making sure that you got the hearings, hearing results, responding, uh, you, your, your Gmail calendars should also be up to date. So whenever, you know, you have, um, major things that you don't want to forget for the next day, you need to put in the calendar, such as like insurance renewals and, and stuff like that. Um, Yeah, I think um, these are all important, but nothing that I need to um, need to harp on. I think pretty much covered a lot of it. Um, yeah, going going to the the discipline of, of your clients, um, it's reasonable for them to have you know maybe two two one one major and two minor projects going on at any given time. Um, if, if you have a board who's just trying to do everything all at once and trying to uh, um, fix all of their ails today, then you're not going to be able to manage that. It's, it's too much. So you have to make sure that you have these conversations with the boards and communicate to them when they are using up too much of their, of their time or when they are uh, um, just asking for too much. And if they insist on asking for too much, this is a, an excellent opportunity for Dean to come in to, to help. Okay, yeah, care about the company's profit, profitability, um, including the profitability of affiliate companies. We do track that and um, it, it is something that we look at 
when we're looking at you know who's going to manage which association and, and this and that is is uh, um, it's a it's a number of things you know it's it's um, utilization of affiliate companies it's um, uh, you know we had a we had a manager who who I won't name. But whenever we had something on a company level that we wanted to do, that we wanted to get um, our, our, our boards to be on, on board with, um, for whatever reason, she, she would always come back saying that um, my board didn't agree, my board didn't agree, my board didn't agree. And so if, if you just have like one manager and, and let's say the success rate for the other managers is 80 to 90% and then another manager is, is uh, um, 20%, that means that um, they are, they're not uh, competent to implement company policies and can't, can't assert themselves, can't convince the boards of, of why it's um, important. And as a result, um, it, it makes the, the, the objectives of the company all the more difficult to, to achieve. So we look at those things. Okay, I think, that, I think I'm gonna call it quits there. There's, there's more that we can do um, another day. Um, the, the main thing that I wanted to focus on is uh, the relationship between the manager and the manager assistant, making sure you're using efficient use of your time, the debrief, when the minutes are done, when the board packet's done, when the punch list is done. Those, those, just, just those five things alone will, will uh, be super beneficial and make you much more successful, much more efficient. And it will also help train our uh, next generation of managers, which, which uh, we all want. Um, so uh, as feared, I did all the talking. But uh, before we go, I would like to give any or all of you an opportunity to ask questions or provide additional feedback on this. What time is it? I think I put, I put a oh, comment in the chat about minutes, just okay. some advice of what I do. Let I don't me, know uh, how anybody else does it. I'm trying to get off stop share, but it won't let me. I also asked you a question in the chat. <clears throat> um, let me get to the chat. Yeah, so I, I've always done the minutes in real time. You know, uh, I always had a laptop at the meeting and I always did the meeting, the minutes right there on the spot. You know, there's, there's very little change from, um, from meeting to meeting. So uh, it's actually, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it is just do the minutes right there in real time. And then you, you, you gotta do a little cleanup and correction afterwards. Um, but it, it's it's something that I've I've always done, and it saved me, saved me you know a, a, an hour or two of having to do the minutes the next day, so it makes makes uh, sense. <clears throat> Sue, uh, do you want do you want the PowerPoint presentation or the actual underlying document? I I think the whole presentation was was fabulous. Um, it would be great to just have that and maybe upload it somehow. I just, it was, it's just oh. really clear and concise and a really good training tool for um, assistants and managers. Oh, you meant, you meant the video itself? Well, I'm not sure. I, maybe just the, I, I don't know. Did you, do you have words over your original PowerPoint? No, no, well, I have the PowerPoint. I have the actual underlying document and I also recorded, I, I, am, I am also recording this session, so. Okay. So I have all of that. I think um, that the presentation would be great. Okay. All right. Um, I want to know if anybody has any pushback on the concept of the debrief. What do you mean pushback? Don't want to do it. And you hear my reasons why? Oh. I think it's really valuable, but I don't know if it happens all the time. I, I, I don't think it happens uh, um, hardly at all. And that's, that's a problem. Um, so the reason I'm asking for, for, uh, for pushback is not because um, I think 
I mean, not because I want to um, um, push back on the pushback, but I do want to hear maybe some reasons that I'm that I'm not necessarily seeing for avoiding what I know to be a super critical step in in not only managing your associations but also training training the managers, the future managers. Um, for those for those of you. For those of you that um, do have uh, new assistants, it's a really good way to get your, your, your neurons synced up and so that you can think along the same lines and, and they can understand, because they'll understand your thought process. Janine? Uh, yeah, so I don't really think it's, I think with new assistants, it's absolutely necessary to have a debrief after the meeting. Um, but some of like my assistants that I work with regularly, um, they, they know the system. They know that um, I expect to see, you know, or we expect to see minutes in some sort of draft form within a day or two after the meeting. You know, by then I've uh, done the punch list and I've already emailed it over to them. They've already looked at it. They've already like knocked out a good 70% of what is already there. So I think it comes in the systems that the manager sets up um, with their assistant in creating that synergy. And then once you have that, it's just a simple phone call. Like I won't like debrief with Jenny, Alicia or Sarah. I'll just check in and say, hey, you know, um, here's our, here's the priorities based off of the punch list and and then we move forward so okay. that's how our debriefs are um at least with um my three are um conducted so and, and it's right. a pretty efficient system so however a manager needs to set that up um to create that synergy is okay. what i call a debrief so 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 you know basically you know everything is results-based you know, I'm, I'm providing this, this information to you and I'm saying that it's, it's a policy, but I'm not proactively looking at the calendar, seeing who had meetings and then spying on you to see if you had a debrief. Um, and if I'm never, if I'm never called to your accounts because of service issues, then it'll never come up. So, um, without, without saying Janine yeah that's that's fine because I'm not saying that but what I'm saying is so long as it works and I'm not called in and I and, I, and I'm not having to uh, um, figure out what's going wrong then you're not going to hear from me if I do get called into a meeting and then I see that these things aren't happening then 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 there, there will be an issue that needs to be addressed um, also if um, you know uh, I'm not going around the office looking over people's shoulders at, at their email, but I do sometimes when I notice that things are not that things are kind of falling through the cracks. Like if I notice that I'm boomeranging somebody quite a bit, I will, I'll, I'll go look over their shoulder, look at their email, look at their inbox. And if I see that the inbox is just filled with 500 emails, then, um, then, then I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up as, as an, as an issue. Um, but if you're somebody who, I never have to think about, never have to boomerang, never have to, you know, worry about whether or not I'm going to get a response. Then, in all in all likelihood, um, you'll you'll never hear from me. So I'm not going around uh, trying to, because uh, uh, um, I understand everybody ma everybody manages differently, everybody has different processes, um, and and so basically, I agree with you, Janine. In the very beginning, you've got to follow this procedure. But at some point when your neurons are linked up and you guys are all on the same page and you guys basically just sharing the same brain, then, um, and, and you're serving your communities to a high level, then you're not going to hear anything from me. Hey, Larry. Hey, back. Paul. I think one of the things in that, unless I miss it, I, I didn't hear, I think, um, and this is directed at my colleagues as managers, us as, us as managers need to make sure that we provide a, for the lack of a better phrase, a safe environment for the system managers to come and talk to us. So when we come in and we talk about these things, they're not, not concerned about that. We're just talking about, you know, the actions that took place or the job or the meeting or something along those. I feel it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that, that that's there. So when we do sit down and talk, you know, we can 
talk and say what needs to be said instead of um, an assistant being concerned about, you know, any pushback that comes from the manager based on the environment that's going on. So we have to take that upon ourselves as a manager. Yeah. As, as leaders, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> All right. Well, I am going to slowly wrap up just in case somebody wants to. All right, we're done here. All right. Um, thank you everybody. Um, uh, <laughs> we have a lot of good videos on the, on the, um, on the YouTube channel. Um, and we're just, just more and more. Sue, thank you for your efforts in getting those put together. Dean, the Novas, um, it's, it's really good to see. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. And um, I will look at this, what was recorded here right now and see if it's good enough to be put up on our, on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, but if so, we'll have this, this as well. And uh, I, I can't remember who, somebody had the idea. It might've been, might been Janine or Christine to, um, you know, kind of tackle one of these subjects on a regular basis at the, during these meetings, record them and then add them to the uh, YouTube channel. So this might be the first of that. Or not, I got nothing. Hey, uh, Brad, how you doing? Everything good? So, so? Hanging in there. I'm staying home. All right. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, take care. It's good to see you. And uh, see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.